And all of us know that Jesus' blood was poured out. When I say that, I get a picture of the cross and his blood was poured out for all of us. But did you know that his blood speaks? It has a voice and it speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Hello and welcome to Living Word, growing a family that experiences every promise of God. You're listening to another life-changing word from Pastor Kelly Anderson. For more information, visit our website at livingwordonline.com. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just praise you and thank you for this time together. Lord, I thank you for your word, and that is the truth that sets us free in our lives. So we open our hearts. We allow the Holy Spirit to reveal the deep things of you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So you're like, where is Pastor Jason? I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he is, um, he's driving back. Our oldest son, Christian, is moving back to Arizona. Yeah, and he's going to be on staff here at Living Word. He has been at, in uh, Seattle for five years. He went to school there. He did ministry there, and he met the love of his life there. And now they're coming here and planting and starting the next season here. So praise the Lord. He's also... Pa- um, preaching at a church up there, Dave Minton's church. So he's preaching right now, and I'm preaching right now. Amen? Amen. All right. I'm going to speak to you guys today about the, the blood speaks a better word. The blood of Jesus speaks a better word. You know, the, the attacks of the enemy can come so often and feel so relentless at times. He tries to attack our home, our money, our children, our nation, these are the things that he tries to attack. And here's the thing, he just doesn't want you to know something. That he has no legal right to have any part of your life. He has no legal right. When Jesus shed his blood on the cross, he accomplished more than redemption and the remissions of sin. He, the blood of Jesus, reversed every single curse that the enemy brought. He reversed it. Sickness, disease, poverty, lack, addiction, or any type of bondage to sin. It's over. It's finished. It's been, Jesus completed the work. And those things have no legal right in your life, ever. And that is what the blood of Jesus and the blood of Jesus speaks a better word. You know, our cell phones, they can do so many different things, can't they? Have you bought a cell phone and you see all these apps on it? And how many of you know every single one of the apps and all that they do? There's there's so much on our phone that it can do. It does much more than just texting and taking pictures and answering the phone. There's so much to it. In fact, I, I was looking up, there's so many different apps. You know, you can do um, a count your calorie app or a workout app, or you can do like a, a photo app where you can change photos, or you can do social media on an app. You know, I was looking up crazy apps, and there's an app out there, and it's called the Pimple Popper. <laughs> I don't have that app. Just so you know, I don't have that app. I was just looking up crazy apps. But you can virtually pop pimples on your phone. If that is something that you find very satisfying, you can do it. On your phone. My kids are laughing right now. Because I don't, I don't pop like Jason sits. That would be totally gross. But my boys, I might do that. <laughs> I don't know. It's very satisfying to pop Matthew zits. I just have to say that. <laughs> oh, maybe Jason should come back and teach. He's, <laughs> you guys are going to tell him I taught about pimples. Okay. <laughs> But if you knew all, everything that your phone could do, you would utilize it so much more. And the same goes with the power of the blood of Jesus. There's so much power in the blood of Jesus. There is victory. There is reconciliation unto God. There is redemption. There's healing. There's peace. There's joy. There's so much packed in the powerful blood of Jesus. And all of us know that Jesus' blood was poured out. When I say that, I get a picture of the cross, and his blood was poured out for all of us. But did you know that his blood speaks? It has a voice, and it speaks a better word 
than the blood of Abel. In Hebrews chapter uh, 12 and verse 24, it says this. It says, we have come to the mediator of a new covenant and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Jesus established a new covenant by his blood. With his blood, he established the new covenant that we live in. And that blood, it continues to speak. It speaks from heaven. It is, you are in the bloodline of Jesus Christ. And that blood speaks, spiritually speaks into your life and creates change and wonderful victory in our lives. The Bible says that it, it speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. You know, the first mention of blood in the Bible was when Cain killed his brother Abel. And God went to Cain and said, where's your brother? And he said, because listen, he goes, this is how he said it. Listen, your, blood, your brother's blood cries out to me from the, from the ground. His blood was crying out to God. What was it crying out? It was crying out vengeance for the murder. It was crying out. But the blood of Jesus, it says, speaks a better word. The blood of Jesus speaks forgiveness. The blood of Jesus speaks restoration. The blood of Jesus speaks reconciliation unto God. The blood of Jesus speaks the supply of all your needs. The blood of Jesus speaks a better word. Some of the finest um, thoroughbred horses can be found in Lexington, Kentucky. And Lexington, Kentucky is where they breed these horses. They live on these most glorious ranches, probably better than some of the vacations we've ever even been on. These horses live on these kind of ranches. And one horse in particular is American Pharaoh. American Pharaoh won the Triple Crown in 2015. In 2015, he won the Triple Crown, which was an amazing achievement for this horse. But what makes this horse stand out from others is that he is the great, great, great grandson of another horse. And you've probably heard of this horse, Secretariat. Secretariat also won the Triple Crown in 1973. But what makes Secretariat so amazing is, I want to say it the right way, what made him so outstanding is his pedigree, which was passed down through his bloodline to create more horse champions. The power, the victory is in the bloodline of that animal. Likewise, just like us, when we become born again, we are refathered and we line up now, right when you became born again, you line up with Jesus. And you have that bloodline of a champion on the inside of you. You can have victory. You can have everything that he took back from the enemy. Everything that he accomplished on the cross is yours because now you are in that bloodline. Jesus' bloodline is one of complete victory in every area of our lives. As he is so am I in this world. Amen? Amen. Probably thinking, wow, she's, she's really serious today. <laughs> she's kind of intense. <laughs> but here's the thing. I'm, I'm kind of sick and tired of what's going on in our world today. Yeah. I'm kind of sick and tired of everybody telling us that we have to be afraid of stuff. Because yeah. yeah. you know what? We don't. That, that coronavirus, it has no legal right to touch me, to touch you, or touch my family. That is what the blood of Jesus has done for you. It has no legal right. I challenge someone to, to, <laughs> to say, why aren't you wearing a mask in a store? Not here. In a store. I have a mask on. It's called the blood of Jesus. <laughs> I am who God says I am, and I can do what God says I can do. Jesus is in me, and he is the champion. He is the champion within me. And when I have that new blood, what happens is now a new life happens. That blood transforms my life. 
It's just like the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation is come, the old is gone, the new is here. And that's spiritually what happens. When you became born again, you got into that bloodline. That old bloodline was gone. And that new bloodline, you line up with the victory in the name of Jesus. Amen? And when you do that, there's a different authority and power that comes on you. You just kind of walk in it. You realize when you became born again, when you accepted Jesus into your life, I, I bet I could ask anyone in here, you felt that your life had changed. That's because you stepped into a different realm. Spiritually, you have a different um, authority and, and, and different power that runs through the inside of you. And, and what happens because of that is you get different results in life. I was talking to Pastor Holly this past week, and she was sharing with me the story of her son Heath and the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. When her son was um, about two weeks old, he kept, they would feed him, and, and all the food would come out. And then so they would feed him, and it would projectile out of this baby. He was only two weeks old, two, three weeks old. And so they took him to the doctor, and the doctor said, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong. And so they sent him home, only to have the projectile, the food just keep coming up and up. After several visits and going to urgent care, one day she just was like, I am done, and I'm going to figure out what's going on with my baby. And she went to that doctor's office, and she sat there. She said, no, I don't have an appointment, but you're going to figure out what's going on with my child. And they did his vitals. They found he had lost two pounds, and he, was, he had a fever, and they admitted him to the hospital. And she said that for one whole week, they could not figure out what was wrong with her baby boy. But she said this. She said, every night, I would hold my baby, and I would plead the blood of Jesus. I would just plead the blood of Jesus over him. I know the doctors don't know, but Jesus, you know what is wrong with my child. They did one more test on him and brought in a specialist. You know what that specialist said? I know what's wrong. I know exactly how to fix this. And they did a simple procedure. They, they opened up a little blockage that was inside of him. And within 24 hours, he was back at home eating and thriving. <laughs> Amen? It's the power of the blood of Jesus. What was she doing? When she was pleading that blood, she was saying, enemy, you have no right, legal right to touch my child. You have no legal right. I, I claim healing on this child. Sickness and disease are not a part of the bloodline of Jesus Christ. And so she called it in, and it manifested. Amen? I'm going to stop here for a moment because we have to talk about the enemy because he is the accuser of the brethren. And he, all he wants to do is he wants to convince you that you are not qualified for all that Jesus has afforded to you. He comes to accuse, condemn, and put guilt on you. You think about Adam in the Garden of Eden. You know, when, when God placed Adam in the Garden of Eden, he placed him in a finished work, a complete work. It was paradise. He had everything that he would ever need. And what did the enemy come and do? You have to know that this is the enemy's tactic. He's the accuser. He comes and says, you're not qualified. Watch this. He, he said, he's trying to tell him to eat the fruit. You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day if you eat of it, your eyes will be opened. And you will be like God knowing good and evil. You will be like God. Hmm. The truth is, Adam was already like God. Come on. He was made in the likeness, an image of Father God. That's how God created him. The enemy was trying to come, and he did. He came to tell him to qualify for something that he already qualified for. Yeah. That's what the enemy tries to do. That is the tactics of the enemy. See, this is what the enemy, he goes, he goes around like a little roaring lion, seeking whom he can devour. He's the accuser. More than a conqueror. You? You're not more than a conqueror. You can't do anything. Comes to you and says, 
Healing, you want healing in your body? You cause that. You eat bad. You don't take care of yourself. Sounds like the enemy, right? You want wholeness in your family? You? That, 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 that doesn't happen. You, a great marriage? Yeah, no one has great marriages in your family. And see the enemy? He tries to come and disqualify you. And we just have to look at him in the face and say, you're a liar. You are a liar, and I, do, I reject everything that you're trying to come into my thoughts and say. I reject that. I do have a legal right. I have a legal right by the blood of Jesus. And you take back what is yours. It says here in Romans 8, 1 and 2. Therefore, there is now, say now, now, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Say, I am set free. I am set free. So when condemnation comes, when that voice of the accuser comes, what, what do you do? What do you do in that moment? You go back to what the blood says about you. In that moment, you go to the blood. What does the blood say about me? The blood says that I have been redeemed. I am the righteousness of God. My righteousness comes by faith in Jesus, not by what I have done, but by what he has done for me. And I receive it. And that blood speaks a better word. My parents um, have always pled the blood of Jesus over our family. And um, it's just one, one of the things that they always do as their prayer time. Um, I don't know if you know this, but I have four brothers. We're all married. And even to this day, I know that they plead the blood of Jesus. And she had told me the, the other day, she's like, well, the coronavirus is not going to hit anyone in our family because I plead the blood of Jesus. And I'm like, that's awesome, because I do too. <laughs> um, but one day, my mom was walking out to her car. She had a lot of things in her hands. And as she was walking out to her car, uh, she stepped on something that felt like a large hose. And when she looked down, that rattlesnake bit her right in the leg. And as she was being rushed to the hospital, she was looking at that snake bite that was in her leg. And she said, I plead the blood of Jesus. Lord, your word says that we could trample on snakes and scorpions, and we have the authority to overcome the enemy in any part of our life, and no harm will come upon me. Amen. You know, they, they didn't find one trace of venom in her. The power of the blood of Jesus. You have to take your right as a Christian of faith and plead the blood of Jesus. But what else was she doing? She was winning by the blood of the lamb and the word of her testimony. So she said, I plead the blood of Jesus, but she put with that the word, the word that no harm will come to me. The blood speaks a better word. How do I apply the blood of Jesus? In Exodus 12, it talk, we can read about the, the Passover. And in this time, the Lord instructed Moses and the Israelites to take the blood and put it on the doorposts of their house. And when the enemy was going to come and kill all the firstborn, the enemy would pass over that house because of the blood. God said, when I see the blood, you will be saved from death. You know, the blood would have had no effect if it sat at a bucket at their front door. They had to actually apply the blood. Yeah. They had to take their little high sup branch and, and apply it. And, and here's the thing too. You know what it says, I, my beginning scripture said, and the sprinkled blood speaks a better word. The sprinkled blood, I got to thinking about that. And I thought, the sprinkled blood. You know, if, if death was coming to my, I would paint the blood of Jesus. But the Lord would show me, only, you only need one drop of that redemptive blood of Jesus. Just one drop.
can bring the power in your life. Just one drop can save you. Amen. The sprinkled blood of Jesus speaks a better word. So how do I cover things with the blood? By speaking it, by using your tongue. When the enemy tries to attack you, you plead the blood. When he tries to bring fear or torment, you plead the blood. The term pleading the blood, it's, it, it might sound like you're begging, but it's not. It's a legal term. Pleading the blood is actually a legal term. Think of it as a lawyer pleading his case before the judge. He presents evidence and facts to support his case. What is your evidence? Your evidence is the blood of Jesus covers it all. The blood of Jesus covers it all. Revelation 12, 11 says this, and they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Have you covered your car with the blood of Jesus? Have you covered your family with the blood of Jesus? Have you covered your house with the blood of Jesus? Have you covered your workplace? Have you covered your marriage? Cover everything with the blood of Jesus because the enemy has no legal right. He has no legal right to have any part. There should not be depression in my family because the enemy has no legal part. I have been set free from that. There should be no sickness. Amen? Because the blood of Jesus covers it all. Each time that me and my kids, when we travel, when I'm about to get on that airplane, I place my hand on that airplane. I say, I cover this flight with the blood of Jesus. There will be no terror on this flight. There will be no bad thing happening on this flight. You will get us safely to our destination because I plead the blood of Jesus. One time in particular, I was traveling with Christian, Katie, and Matthew. They were real little, and Jason wasn't with, with us in, at this time. And I remember we all put our, our hand, I remember their little hands on the, on the airplane. I said, I plead, this, I plead the blood of Jesus on this flight. And when we flew and we got into Arizona, there was really bad weather. It was monsoon season. And the pilot came on and said, we're gonna circle for about 20 minutes and let this storm pass. And when it passes, we can land. Well, that 20 minutes, that was a rough ride. I mean, it was like jerking us up and going up and down and, and very shaky. And, and my kids, my kids were getting scared, getting very frightened. Like, it, it's not, that's not fun. And I remember looking at them and I said, look at me, look at me. I want you to look at me right now. And they're like, I said, we fled the blood of Jesus. There is no fear right now in the name of Jesus. Do you understand? Do you understand? We fled the blood of Jesus. And we arrived safely. But I want you to know right now that I am pleading the blood of Jesus over you. I plead the blood of Jesus. There's no fear. Fear is out of this place right now. The blood of Jesus is upon you. Amen. We plead the blood of Jesus. That blood has been poured out for us. He said that there's seven places that Jesus bled on the cross and leading up to the cross. Seven places. He's redeemed us and he has reversed the curse. When that crown of thorns was put upon his head, he overcame every negative thought and any high thing that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. He bled right here over your thoughts. So you can never be tormented by the enemy in your thought life. He sweat great drops of blood. And when he did that, he set you free from fear, anguish, anxiety, worry. He overcame that when he sweat the great drops of blood. It says that he was bruised and he suffered internal bleeding for the hurt wounds within you, the things that no one knows about. He bled for that, for healing, for restoration, for redemption to come in your life. When he was pierced in his side and blood and water both flowed, he, he won freedom 
for us to be reconciled unto God, we can now have a relationship with our Father God because Jesus bled in that area. And when his hands were pierced, when his hands were pierced, he got back for us. We no longer have to work, but everything that our hands touches prospers. He bought that back for us. He redeemed that for us. And his feet, they were pierced, redeeming your path of life. When you became born again, the old is gone, the new has come. He redeemed that for you. And every stripe that was upon his back, every single one has afforded to you all freedom from sickness and disease. The blood of Jesus conquered it all for you. You are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. The blood speaks a better word. And you are in the bloodline of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, thank you, Father God. You have been redeemed. I'm gonna pray over you right now. Lord, I thank you right now that you have redeemed us by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Enemy, you have no legal right. I cast off fear now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you are bringing healing. I thank you are bringing restoration to families right now. The Lord is healing a marriage right now. Thank you, Lord. Just grab that. That you just get, Someone is dealing with a lump that is in their throat. The Lord is healing that right now. The Lord is healing throats. The Lord is healing ears. Ears are opening. Your ear is opening right now. Thank you, Lord. Shuriaka. Kuria. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is healing a mother-daughter relationship. Mm. You've always wanted a, a closer relationship with your mom. And the Lord is healing that for you. Oh, and it's going to be better. You thought you lost your years. You didn't lose any years because God is going to redeem those years back to you. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. I'm going to have Pastor Scott come up here. He's going to do the salvation prayer. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you don't know where you're going to end up one day when you die, I want to give you that opportunity to get saved. It's simple. It's easy. You don't have to jump through a whole bunch of hoops. You don't have to be perfect. All you have to do is believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and was raised from the dead. I get it. You're going to make some more mistakes. We all do. But it doesn't take away your salvation. When I believe, I'm saved. Say this prayer with me. Believe it in your heart and you're saved. Dearly Father, I ask you right now, come into my life, be my Lord, and be my Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and was raised from the dead. In Jesus' name, amen. You're saved. Make sure you get yourself in a church. Be blessed. We'll see you next week.